Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to revisit our implementation of BindFront that used only C++ Lambdas, and this uses C++ 20 style Lambdas. And, uh, you know, we've got this function that takes a variadic parameter pack of the parameters to bind. And I'm just going to do a little bit of code formatting while I'm discussing this. We've got this thing that creates a new lambda here. This is our lambda that is returned. This is the capture expression for the lambda returned from our function called bind front and inside this lambda we are then calling and executing the function that was passed in. Astute viewers when I aired this episode originally may have noticed now, this is not exactly how bind front works. Well, and I, I said it wasn't because the C20 version of bind front is implemented in terms of standard tuple, and that sounded a bit more complicated than it needed to be. So I showed how it's possible to just do this with a regular lambda here and not use a tuple to capture the bound parameters. But it has other problems. And the main problem being that bind front is defined in terms of standard invoke as well. And standard invoke, well, it lets you do things like this. Now here I am trying to call my bind front with my, uh, the function that I want to execute is standard strings member function size, and I'm passing in this object s. And I've got this, well, you know, you must use dot star or arrow star to call a pointer to member function in f, blah, 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 blah. So what do we do about this? Um, well, one option is to write our own invoke function. So let's see if we can do that. So it looks like we've gotten most of the way there, but we're getting this no matching function call, da, 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 da. Let's see. Surely it is clear that you can read this here. Now, the problem is that it is missing this const no except. So I have written my own invoke function that, and let's break this down, takes a member function pointer called func that is a member function pointer on an object of type class that has the return value ret and takes a unknown number of parameters of type param which is this variadic template here and then i've got my object uh, that I'm actually invoking on and I needed that so that I could do this object dot star bit and then I have the actual set of arguments that are being passed on and this is zero to infinity and of course I am doing this forward call here now the problem is that the function that I am trying to call is a const no except function
And there we go, the addition of a couple of extra sets of parentheses and our const no except. And of course, this syntax is entirely intuitive and easy to get right, considering I have actually written this myself dozens of times while working on ChaiScript, and it still took me a couple of tries to get it correct just now. It is possible here this function works, although uh, we're not getting quite the level of optimization that we might expect from something like this. It's hidden behind a function pointer, and that's probably obscuring things a bit. But um, while well, this works with exactly const no except member functions. So of course, if we also want a version that can work with const member functions. Now, right now, this is an ambiguous overload because const and no except, it was the same. And then, well, we need a version that can work with non-const member functions. And we need a version that can work with, let's see, no except member functions. Uh, I think that's all of those. But then we also are going to need versions, let's see, that work with our value qualified, uh, this particular reference qualified overloads for all of these versions. Let's do that. That is one, two, uh, one, two, three of them. I missed one somehow. Uh, that's the const the non-const and the no except. I need the const no except version here. And you have to get the order of all of these things correct, otherwise we're going to get various errors from the compiler const reference no except so no except has to be last in our function signatures and we've got something that's a redefinition somewhere let's see where that one is uh, yep const no except up here so this is a copy paste error uh, so that's Got almost all of the member functions. No, that no. Let's see. That's got. Well, we're ignoring volatile is what we're ignoring right now. But considering in C plus plus twenty there is a movement to deprecate volatile and portions of this are moving forward in C plus plus twenty, and I expect we'll see more deprecation of volatile in C plus plus twenty three. We're going to ignore volatile for the moment. But right now I've got the const. Uh, non-const, uh, no except, uh, unqualified, L value reference qualified, and R value reference qualified overloads for all of these. And notice I don't actually have to change uh, anything about the implementations at the moment, but the implementation is just a single line anyhow, so there's probably a not a lot to do there. Even if I made an intermediate helper function, I'd have to do all of these things to forward things to that function, and then I would just have to call the function in there anyhow. So this is probably about the best that we can get, although we can consolidate some of these if you know we don't care so much about readability but want a little bit more compactness. As after all, we know in C++ white space doesn't matter. So we can do this. Now we've got all of the member function overloads that we care about and not volatile. We add volatile, that doubles them. Right now we have got 12, that's 24. Now we, uh, in the process, we lost our free function overload. So let's just go ahead and do that one real quick. Let's see, that's just going to be a regular function pointer that has no qualifiers on it and we don't need the object so then we will just call this thing called func something like that okay so that's our free function version and that still leaves out the version for a callable object like a lambda 
So I guess we just need some leftover thing here that can take anything. No, and, and these should all actually be decal type auto, not just plain auto. You need to go back a couple of episodes to get the bit on that. I am not going to change that code at the moment. So we've got our invoke and we want a callable of some sort and a set of params. And now what do we do here? I guess we just invoke the callable with a set of params. And we hope that the compiler's overload resolution finds the correct version that we want. So that's uh, 13 implementations. We could be up to 25 if we added the volatile overloads that we didn't add. So there you go. Nice and simple, straightforward implementation of invoke so that our bind front does everything that we want it to do. Oh, I forgot to add const expert to all of these. Well, that's a problem. But what we can do instead is use the version of standard invoke that our compiler and tool chain writers for us uh, have written for us here. And for an extra bonus lesson, an argument dependent lookup, this particular version of bind front was being found in the functional header that I just included. And that's because I am using the standard string size here. This is in the namespace of std colon colon, so it's going to find that bind front for me. And that leads to a confusing and difficult to debug error. But if we do this colon colon here, then I'm going for the global namespace, which is in fact where my bind front is. And, you know, we didn't really dig into this, but it looks like this is basically the same as the implementation I got. It was not able to be completely optimized away in my version either. So I think I did basically the right thing for my implementation of invoke. And uh, standard invoke should be fully const expert in C++20, I believe. So there you go. Uh, just be appreciative of the work that your standard library writers have been doing for you and um, you know, use the work that they've been doing. Don't reinvent the wheel yourselves, and thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly.